Hey everyone, welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the news. Glad to have you. I hope your work week is off to a great start. We are all caught up on our holiday news, so we're going to kick it off with what's been going on since our last Friday episode. Over the weekend, Sunday to be specific, the booster catching and stacking arms known as the CHOP-6 of the orbital launch tower down there in Starbase, Texas, were for the first time raised from the bottom of the tower past the Starship quick disconnect arm all the way to the tippy top. Of course, Lab Padres cams being on site to capture the entire event. But then Elon Musk shared his own drone footage of the completed event, slowly panning backwards with a celebratory poof of gas coming from the orbital launch mount to finish it off. It now appears that the orbital launch tower is capable of stacking Starship boosters on the pad, as well as Starships on top of the booster. However, it still needs to have the, like, the tank treads installed on those chopstick arms so the booster and the Starship can be moved further away from the tower and closer to the tower because that's needed. And today, SpaceX tested the strength of the tower's arms using large and anatomically correct sacks of water. Who knows what the near future holds for SN20's testing regimen. Yesterday, Lab Padre and RGV aerial photography captured video of the ship venting. And its transport stand just made its way down Highway 4 to the launch site as well. More road closures are scheduled for the rest of this week starting tomorrow. And in other Boca Chica news, Booster 3's LOX tank is finally being scrapped. Rest in pieces, ye that never flew. So our last little bit of Starship news concerns Starlink as well. So for those of you who don't know, it is SpaceX's ultimate goal to place up to 30,000 Starlink satellites in orbit around the Earth. Currently, they have a few thousand Generation 1 and 1.5 Starlink satellites in orbit, but eventually they want to add tens of thousands of more Generation 2s. But they can't do that with Falcon 9, which is what we've been seeing launch version 1 and 1.5. They need Starship to launch Generation 2 because they're bigger with all the bells and whistles on them that allow faster connectivity and lower latency for their users. But like everything else SpaceX wants to do, first they need the government's permission. Late last month, the Federal Communications Commission reached out to SpaceX's lawyers regarding some questions and concerns they had with this 30,000 satellite constellation. If you wanna look over the entire thing, I left a link to the PDF in the description below this video. We're just gonna cover one key element of it, which concerns SpaceX's reply on January 7th. In response to one of the FCC's questions, does SpaceX have any updates regarding the expected timing of launches for the Generation 2 system? SpaceX replied that they have plans to have Generation 2 satellites prepared for launch as soon as March 2022, pending regulatory approval, and that, of course, takes us back to the Federal Aviation Administration that's currently hampering Starship orbital flights because of their environmental assessment that's supposed to be completed at the end of February. Again, SpaceX's response to all of the FCC's questions are linked below. We still currently have a Falcon 9 mission slated for launch this Thursday at 10.25 a.m. Eastern Time. Transporter 3 is SpaceX's third rideshare mission to sun-synchronous orbit that will deploy several different CubeSats for different companies. But all we got left to cover now is today's honorable mention. Virgin Orbit, which is Richard Branson's second space company, is expected to fire its Launcher 1 rocket on a fourth mission tomorrow, hopefully delivering payload to orbit for a second time. Part of that payload will be small satellites for the U.S. military space test program. If you're not familiar with this vehicle, it delivers payload to orbit in a different way than most other rockets. It's fired underneath a Boeing 747, like a missile underneath an F-22 Raptor. And for those of you who are supporters on Locals, I will be covering this one live tomorrow evening exclusively for you. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for checking in. Hopefully I'll see you on Thursday for the SpaceX live launch and then on Friday for our next episode. Until that time, Godspeed. Thank you.